So today we had the release of Godot 4.5 and I have to say I'm pretty excited and I think if you are developing anything in VR, I think Godot is at least worth having a look at. They released a few small little quality of life improvements that are definitely going to make it a lot easier not only to develop VR applications, but they're also going to help quite significantly if you're trying to push the limits of what your VR applications can do. Just briefly, a couple things that, that they noted in the release notes today is they introduce uh, application Space Warp, which does uh, allow for you to get a little bit more out of your MetaQuest headsets if you are looking to develop for mobile VR, as well as foveation rendering, which can certainly uh, uh, lead to some pretty significant performance improvements. And so um, I wanna have just a quick look at a Godot project, see some of the things that they've released today not all of it is going to be vr related of course um, but i do definitely think that it is worth having a look at so let's go ahead and jump right over to my computer we'll have a look at some of the things that they are releasing with godot 4.5 Okay, so I have the release notes open. We'll come back to this at the end because um, I do want to cover everything that did get released in Godot 4.5 because there's definitely a lot of significant changes, but I definitely don't have enough time to review all of them. So I have here just a quick little demo scene. Um, this was just something real quick that um, I took from uh, Cinti Studios. This is just one of their demo scenes. Um, I. I, I don't have any affiliation with Cinti. Um, just I've used a lot of their models for a long time and this was one that I had avail to, available to me and I, I just tend to like it quite a bit. So um, right off the bat, you can't really notice a whole lot of differences. Um, I'm gonna start with some of the more generic things um, that kind of apply to anybody who's looking at Godot 4.5 right now um, before we get into all the VR specific things. So one of the more um, important things that definitely did get released is the introduction of stencil buffers. So um, right here, this actually has a uh, material. I gave this one a different one from everything else in the scene. Um, so if we go ahead and come down here, um, you can also see, by the way, we ha now have the option to enable and disable certain settings within our materials. But if we come down here in our materials, um, and I should note that isn't just specific to materials, they've applied that across the board um, to a lot of their editor things. <laughs> um, but if we come down here into our materials, we now have the option to add in stencils. So for example, we can add in a stencil outline. Um, this is just kind of one of the more generic ones that you can add in. Um, so you can do that. Um, we also have X-ray, which um, does exactly what you'd expect. We can now see that object through, um, th through different objects. And then um, there is also the option for custom, which I haven't really played around with too much, but that is an option if you are looking to um, use stencil for whatever reason. Um, and I should note, um, to my knowledge, this works on all different rendering um, uh, modes. Um, so I'm currently using Forward Plus, but if you're looking at mobile VR, you're probably going to end up using mobile or compatibility. That's what I've been using so far, um, and this does seem to work on both of those as well. Now backtracking just a little bit, like I said, um, there's a few small updates that they did make to the editor in general. Um, you have things like you can now enable and disable specific settings. I don't believe this is in everything that you get by default in Godot. Obviously, if you're making your own scripts, um, I believe there is a way to make these checkboxes for yourself, but um, I do definitely see it here in materials. So if you want to disable certain features, if they're not necessary, if you're trying to um, improve performance or anything like that, that is now an option. Um, another thing that I have definitely seen that in is lighting and there you can definitely see this in action. Um, so the shadows, for example, does have just a simple checkbox. You can click that and just turn off all shadows for a light source or all your light sources by just clicking that checkbox. So it's nice and simple, easy to use. Um, there is also um, just uh, some general cleanup. Um, they do now say that there is better support for Wayland um, or support in general. Um, I don't, I haven't been on Wayland in a second, but I am definitely looking at swapping over to Hyperland again. So um, this is definitely something that I'm interested in. Um, and they do also say that some of the editor is a little clearer. I don't know if I fully see it, but if you see a side-by-side -side comparison, um, which we'll be looking at through the review notes, you can definitely see that quite clearly. Um, now getting into some of the more VR stuff, because that's something I'm very fascinated in. Um, and I should note something before we actually start looking at that is you will require for most of these changes 
the um, Godot OpenXR vendors add-on. Um, you just drop that into an add-ons folder um, and you, you'll be all good, but you do require this uh, add-on in order to get some of these features. Um, but if we come out on up here to project settings, um, we can come right down near the bottom. Where it is, there it is, OpenXR. So if we come down here into OpenXR, um, I don't know if all of these are do require this add-on, um, but you have the option for foveation rendering. Um, one of the things that I'm really excited to play around with is there is now a checkbox for application space warp. So you can enable that. Um, and in case you're unaware of what that is, it kind of, um, they, they ha there is a more proper terminology for it, um, but it does kind of um, render in between frames. Um, so it's sort of a, a, an interpolation between um, every frame. And the whole point of that is, the, your, is your headset will render half as many frames and then kind of figure out what needs to go in between. Um, and you can use that in order to get just a little bit more performance out of your headset. Um, they do say that this isn't going to work for every application. There are definitely use cases where this is not going to lead to any performance impact and might even do the complete opposite. Um, but that is definitely an option and I do definitely want to play around with that as well. Now, one more thing that was added in um, that is specifically VR related that I haven't yet gotten a chance to check out. I believe this does actually require a plugin, but there is an option to add in um, actual physical controllers. Um, I believe they are specifically related to the MetaQuest headset. So you can actually see the finger position. So like if a player rests their um, thumb on the thumbstick or on a specific button, um, I, I know there's some sensitive points on the controller. Um, or if they start pressing certain buttons, you can visually see it within the editor. Um, I do believe that this is part of a plugin. I actually have not had a look at this yet, um, but that can definitely be a very nice feature to add in to um, your applications as well. I'm not seeing it here. I think it was called um, XR models or something like that. I, I think it was quite literally called models or, so or something to that effect. Um, but those are some of the main features. I want to have a quick look at the entire, um, all the release notes that they did have today, because like I said, there's a lot of things that I can't quite frankly cover all just by going through the engine. Um, so hitting off with some of the main highlights, again, we get Sensor Buffer support. Um, we do get screen reader support and some script back tracing, um, some nice little features there. Um, one of the things that I do definitely want to have a look at in the future, I don't know if this is going to be something that impacts VR at all, but um, we now have a shader baker, which is going to allow for you to do some of the um, shader processing up front before you release an application or a game. Um, again, I don't know if this is something that is necessarily going to work or work well for any mobile VR headsets or VR headsets in general, but that is definitely something I want to look at in the future. Um, they do also add in some support for um, internationalization. That's a, bi a bit of a, a mouthful, not something I've fully um, experimented with, but I am interested to, uh, to, to have a look at this. It would be really nice to see more Godot projects be able to get ported to various different um, languages and just kind of be used all over the place. Um, we do get chunk tile map physics. I've honestly touched 2D very little. Um, Let's see here, we got duplicate at ease. Um, so this was, I, I've not played around with the duplication too much yet. Um, that's still something I have to play around with a little bit. Um, we get some more editor upgrades and I believe here's where we all, is where I'll also be showing you the cleaner UI that they showed off as well. Um, so you get a mute game toggle um, in case you just need to see something visually. Um, you now have the option to just drop in a preload option. Um, for those of you guys who are unfamiliar with Godot, or if you are, usually when you drop in a, um, it, an asset into Godot, it's just gonna copy that path. This is just going to basically fill out that whole line for you so you don't have to write in the whole, um, you know, a constant or variable preload, all, all, all that stuff. It just kind of shows you, uh, it just kind of shortens down a little bit of that coding time, um, just a little bit. Um, let's see here. We got um, export variables as variants. Um, we got toggleable inspector sections. That was that little checkbox that you saw. Um, like I said, I think that's something you can do into any script now. Not something I've experimented with yet. 
Um, you can now pick colors directly from the editor, which I think is gonna be awesome. Um, I would love to be able to do that a little bit more. Um, execute editor scripts. Um, let's see here. We got paste as unique option. Um, this is not something I think I've used a whole lot of. Um, I sh probably should be using unique um, nodes a little bit more often, but it just kind of shortens down um, the node names a little bit, makes it a little bit easier to um, manage in code if you need just more um, solid things. Um, duplicate projects straight from the project manager. This is definitely a nice little feature. Um, I've kind of fallen into the bad habit of not using Godot, so I've been I've been duplicating projects a lot. Um, so this might be a little helpful for me until I get back into the habit of using Godot again. Um, let's see, append signal sources automatically. Um, we do get some animation player quality of life. Um, I'm still learning the animation graph, so um, this will be really nice to, to do. Hopefully it'll make it a little easier to see. Um, here's that icons look a little sharper. Um, you can definitely see that they are a little bit sharper than what they used to be. Um, this is, to me, one of those smaller improvements. Um, I definitely appreciate it, um, but definitely a smaller improvement for sure. Um, let's see, we get foldable containers. Um, we get to label effect, uh, or we get to stack effects um, on text. Um, and then we get, let's see here handle uh, complex GUIs a little bit more, um, a, a little bit more easily here. Um, let's see, we got, we now have the required identifier. Um, so it does look like, doo -doo 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 -doo, uh, when extended, some classes need some virtual methods to be overridden in order to work. Um, so just kind of, from what I understand, it'll kind of make sure that if something is required, you can actually use it while, while while you're looking at scripts specifically. Um, let's see here, we get um, for Android, uh, editor UI adapted for non-desktop users, um, support for devices with 16 kilobyte pages, um, more support. We do get a camera feed support, which I think is pretty interesting. Um, I wonder if um, we might be seeing some more augmented reality stuff in the future. I don't believe Godot currently supports augmented reality, but I would like to see that eventually. Um, let's see, bake light maps and UVs on the go. Um, here's the little Linux uh, update for any of you who are also using Linux. We now get native Wayland sub window support. Um, again, this is something that I'm kind of excited to see. I'll be interested to see how that works when I start experimenting with Hyperland again. Um, we do get support for Vision OS, which is gonna be really nice. Um, I don't have a Vision OS. I've not played with one myself, but I'm very interested to see this potentially lead to more Vision OS applications. Um, th that would just be pretty interesting to me. Um, we get game embedding support on Mac OS. So that's that little game window is now working on Mac OS. Um, like I said, if anybody knows how to use that on Linux, maybe there's a checkbox I'm missing or some extra step I'm missing. Um, I would love to see that. Um, we are finally doing with RC Edit. I get that warning every time I try packaging something on Godot, so I'm kind of happy to see that. <laughs> I'm tired of seeing that, that little warning. Um, little performance boosts if you are using any um, web assembly or if you're developing any web applications. Um, we do have C-sharp.net. I actually have not been using C-sharp.net in a minute, um, but we now get um, loading .NET assemblies directly from Android APKs, which is definitely nice. Um, variatic arguments. Now this is kind of an interesting one. This kind of allows for you to add in when you create a function, um, a, an unspecified number of parameters. Um, I am interested to experiment with this. I don't know that I've seen this before or if it's been in any programming language I've used, I've not actually tried this. Um, so I am interested to see how this plays out. I think that's gonna be really interesting to see. Um, let's see here, we, we now have abstract classes and methods. This is definitely something that I do wanna play around with a little bit. Um, what this will allow for you to do is you can create a single parent class that can't actually be used, but it can be used to create other things below it. Um, ver it's a very easy thing. So like if you wanna create a person class and then make a bunch of things like Bob, Joe, Jose, what you know, what, whatever you might have, um, j just a bunch of different um, specific people, then you can go about doing that. Um, I actually have not played around with classes specifically too much in Godot, but I'm probably gonna give that a shot now. Um, 
Let's see here, we got some main loop callbacks. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's see, some more improvements to the animation, bind bones to other bones with the bone constraints. Um, batch loading of assets when we import them. Um, I haven't yet seen how this works. I didn't see like any prompt or anything pop up when I went to do, um, when I went to import those Cinti assets. Maybe that's something I missed. I'll have to see how that works. Um, maybe I needed to import it a different way than what I did. I just kind of dragged and dropped everything over. Um, we do get more gamepad support, which is definitely an improvement. Um, dedicated 2D navigation server, process navigation regions asynchronously, um, which will definitely be interesting. Um, I don't quite know how useful that's. Uh, actually, that might be pretty useful. Main thread of, of a computer program it is like a project leader. Da, 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 da. I'll have to look into that. I think that'll be interesting. Um, let's see. We now have a 3D physics interpolation within the scene tree. Um, added more real, added better realism to their um, 3D rendering. So you can see um, this is obviously using Ford Plus. I don't use Ford Plus a whole lot, so. Um, I can't say that this is um, a huge improvement to, to the projects I'll be using, um, but that does look very nice. I, I will be interested to see if that leads to more um, realistic applications from Godot. Um, we do also get uh, the normal bender. Um, again, I don't know that this is something I played around with uh, in Godot. Um, is this something completely brand new? Um, yeah, this is something completely brand new. Um, so, <laughs> so I'll be interested to play around with that. Um, let's see, SMA A1X support. Um, we now get um, half, I believe this is half pre precision support for mobile now. Uh, da, 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 da. Is this half precision or full precision? I think this was half, right? Uh, doo, 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 doo. Uh, the mobile renderer now explicitly asks for half precision floating point. Yeah, so that's now support for half precision. Um, I'll be interested to see if that leads to some performance improvements. I believe um, that that should lead to a few, which will be very nice. Um, here, here's again getting into XR, which is where I, I like to see. Um, support for D3D, uh, D3D12 three d OpenXR backend. Um, we do also get foveated rendering on Vulkan Mobile. Like I said, I think that'll be very nice. I, I'm going to love to see more, um, mo uh, I would love to see if that leads to better applications or um, more advanced uh, applications from um, XR specifically. Um, we do also get application space warp, which is again gonna be very nice. Hopefully it will lead to some pretty significant performance improvements. And then here's that OpenXR render models. Um, I believe this does require some sort of plugin. Um, XR EXT model, doo -doo 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 -doo. In order to use this feature in the game, you need to add OpenXR render models as a child node of XR Origin 3D. Um, maybe this didn't need a, um, Maybe this didn't require a plugin. I'll have to do a little bit more research into that, but I will definitely be looking forward to that. And then of course, finally, they do uh, they do give a thanks to all the people who made all these updates uh, happen. And I also have to give a huge thanks. I'm especially f uh, a fan of seeing the VR stuff uh, being made for Godot. But that's gonna be everything. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if you guys are going to be taking a look at Godot 4.5 if you haven't yet. And if you have, let me know what you think about some of these new updates that have come to Godot 4.5. With that, I will see you in the next reality.